Many centuries ago, when the cold had not yet appeared, people used a sufficient amount of salt to marinate meat and then dry or steam it. By preserving this way, the meat will last longer. And today, people call it ham. With the recipe passed down for 700 years, China's ham processing technique has been recognized as an intangible cultural heritage. We invite you to find out how this dish is different from ham. Ham in China is usually produced in Jinhua City, Zhejiang Province. This is also the reason why this dish is called Jinhua Ham. This dish is very different from European ham. When cooked, the cut meat is still bright red and the layer of fat is very clear. It can be eaten straight away, stewed, or processed into dishes of your choice. Ham has become a signature dish in Chinese cuisine, and food enthusiasts who come to this country must definitely try it once. Ingredients to make ham are carefully selected from traditional local pig breeds with hoof lengths smaller than the femur. Because it is produced in large quantities, it also requires a large source of raw materials. Therefore, in Jinhua City, pigs are often raised on farms with careful care processes to produce the highest quality meat. Ham is produced all year round, but the most delicious time is in late winter and early spring when the first frost appears, people will prepare this dish. At that time, the pigs will be brought to the factories and the first step of the process will begin. Pigs will be quality checked to eliminate those that do not meet standards and then anesthetized and processed. They will have their skin cleaned and their internal organs will be removed and sent to the classification stage. The meat will be divided into parts then packaged and shipped to consumers. The pork legs and thighs will be kept intact to supply ham meat processing factories. This type of ham is usually best served with only the hind legs. After being imported from processing factories, pig's feet will be processed to remove excess fat and skin. Remove all remaining hair and bone debris. Even the blood that accumulates in the legs needs to be removed. Then wash thoroughly and drain. Once the feet have drained, continue with the salting step. This is the most important stage in the ham processing process. Salt will be spread evenly and cover the pig's feet to ensure that the meat will not be damaged during the processing process. After that, the feet will be salted for a certain period of time. After that period of time, the legs will be washed to remove excess salt and wash away dirt on the surface of the meat. Finally, the legs will be hung to dry in a good environment to create conditions for yeast and mold to grow. This drying process will take about 10 months. People will use bone needle to test the doneness of the pork leg. Before using, users often burn them once to remove the rancid smell before processing them into dishes.
Jinwa ham is a high-quality source of protein and fat. Prepared from pork thighs, this meat not only provides an important source of protein for muscle growth and maintenance, but it also is a source of monosaturated fats which help support heart health. In addition, Jinwa ham meat also provides a number of minerals that play an important role in red blood cell formation and energy transmission, while zinc and manganese help maintain mineral balance in the body. However, it should be noted that bacon contains quite a high amount of fat and sodium, so consumption should be done in a balanced manner. Beijing's best roast duck shops sell 3,600 ducks every day. A set of roasted ducks is hung up before and after roasting. Can you believe it when 3,600 ducks are sold in a day at a roast duck shop in Beijing? What is different about this dish compared to regular roasted duck dishes that make it so popular? As a famous dish of Beijing, Many tourists come here from far away just to enjoy this dish. Without further ado, let's see how Peking Roast Duck is created. Ingredients The duck used to prepare Peking duck originates from Nanjing. Newborn ducklings are raised in a free-range environment for the first 45 days of life and force-fed in the next 15 to 20 days, resulting in ducks weighing 5 to 7 kilograms before being released. Before being supplied to processing facilities, ducks are transported to factories for processing. From an original duck, fresh duck meat will be processed and processed to bring to the market as well to supply processing facilities. The processing line at the factory will remove duck feathers and internal organs and then clean them to remove impurities. Ducks supplied to processing factories will be left whole. Ducks brought to the market to serve consumers can also be left whole. Normally, the processing factory will divide the duck into small parts and then package and transport them to consumers to enhance the convenience of the duck. After receiving ducks from the processing plant, the processing facility will conduct preliminary processing of the ducks, check and completely remove the feathers on the skin as well as the fat in the duck's belly, rinse thoroughly with water then use an air pump to inflate the duck from the inside. The duck skin is inflated quickly. This step will help the duck skin when grilled to achieve the dish's characteristic crispiness. Next. Cover the duck with hot water to create volume as well as firmness and shine for the duck's skin. Mix a mixture of water and vinegar and pour it over the duck that has been exposed to hot water. Dressing will contribute to making the duck have a characteristic brown color that looks very beautiful and extremely attractive when cooked. After that, take the duck to dry before grilling. 
fat ducks with smooth, shiny skin are hung in rows on racks to dry. Not only attractive because of its flavor, the unique way of processing is also one of the things that create the brand of Peking duck. When the duck is completely dry, put it in the oven for a standard time until it has the characteristic golden color and it's done. These are oval-shaped ovens with charcoal burning underneath to create heat. With this way of grilling, the duck will become more fragrant than the usual grilling method. While waiting for the duck to cook, we will make the crust to eat with the duck after roasting. First, put the flour into the mixer, slowly add a sufficient amount of water, and mix until the dough is completely mixed. Pour the mixture onto the table and continue kneading. Then, divide the dough into certain parts and shape the crust. Put the shaped dough into the machine and press it until it's very thin. Bake the dough until both sides are cooked evenly. Side dishes such as green onions and mouse milk are also prepared quickly. Wash the green onions and cucumbers. As for the green onions, only take the roots and then cut them into strips. The cucumbers are also cut into bite-sized pieces. How to enjoy Once the ingredients are prepared, the duck meat will have a crispy skin when cooked and the duck meat will be succulent, soft, and retain the typical flavor of the duck. Peking duck is enjoyed in a completely different way from regular duck dishes. Diners will be able to directly observe the chefs preparing the duck after roasting. First, separate the duck skin, then the duck breast meat. The meat will be cut into bite-sized pieces and then placed on a plate. Continue doing so until all the meat is separated from the duck bones. The bones will be chopped and processed into other dishes at the request of diners, such as duck bone soup, spicy stir-fried duck bones, or roasted duck with garlic salt. Diners will use the crust and add a piece of roasted duck, a little onion, cucumber, and sauce, then roll it up and enjoy. The sweet, melt-in-your-mouth duck meat with a gentle aroma is truly wonderful. Nutritional value. Not only is it a delicious dish, Peking duck also brings great benefits to our health. Eating duck meat has a good effect in supporting the treatment of cardiovascular diseases, supporting the treatment of tuberculosis and cancer, under radiotherapy and chemotherapy, Use useful for physically weak people and pregnant women lacking milk. However, it should be noted that because duck meat has cold properties and a yin-boosting effect, people whose colds have not completely recovered should not be eaten temporarily. Especially, do not eat duck meat when the wood ear mushrooms, turtle meat, or black turtle meat. Because duck meat cooked with wood ear mushrooms is cold, eating is not good for the digestive tract. Braised beef ribs is a famous dish of Korea with a unique aroma that anyone who tries it will love it and the rich sweetness eaten with hot rice is very attractive. 
braised beef ribs was voted as one of the delicious dishes you must try when coming to Korea even though its price is quite expensive. When I made it, I realized it was really expensive because it was made from all premium ingredients. Is this dish as delicious as rumored? Let's verify with me now, shall we? Coming to cow farms, the cow care process is carefully carried out by agricultural experts. Cow care experts at the farm ensure that cows are provided with high-quality food, ensuring the best nutrition and health. The cow raising process is designed to optimize living conditions, help cows grow strongly, and provide quality meat. When they reach a standard size and weight, they will be transported to the processing plant. With the modernization of the processing line, the cow processing process takes place quickly and effectively and then continues to be transported to other processing factories. The cow skin and internal organs have all been removed. The body will be kept intact and supplied to the braised beef rib processing factory. After receiving the beef ribs, the factory staff will conduct preliminary processing of the beef ribs. Beef ribs will be cut into bite-sized pieces and then boiled. This helps thoroughly remove dirt and impurities remaining on the beef ribs. After the boiling process, the beef ribs are taken out and washed with cold water to ensure the creation of beef ribs that are not only delicious but also hygienic. After the ribs are rinsed, let them drain and prepare for the next step in the cooking process. To achieve the best flavor for braced beef ribs, the ribs after being boiled will undergo additional preparation to remove excess fat. This ensures that each rib not only retains great flavor, but is also lean with as little fat as possible. After completing the preparation step for beef ribs, the next processing process begins with the preparation of attractive broth. The trio of vegetables used for Koreans' braised beef ribs are radishes, carrots, and shiitake mushrooms. These vegetables hold up quite well when pressure cooked and contribute to the delicious flavor of the dish. Peel pears, apples and onions, cut into small pieces, and puree. Peel garlic and ginger cleanly. In a large stew pot, 
Add all the spices including pear, onion, soy sauce, sesame oil, brown sugar, and mix well into a rich, extremely flavorful mixture. This process is not only a processing technique, but also the secret to creating a unique delicious broth that highlights the delicate flavor of Korean braised beef ribs. Once prepared, pour all the beef ribs into the broth and begin the braising process. Garlic, ginger, and green onions are put in a separate bag and braised with beef ribs. The braising process takes place for several hours until the beef ribs become soft, evenly cooked, and rich in flavor. Finally, after the braised beef ribs have completed the processing process, some spices such as red apples and shiitake mushrooms will be added to increase the variety of flavor of the dish and then packaged and shipped to consumers. Korean braised beef ribs is not only an attractive dish, but also a diverse source of nutrition providing many necessary substances for the body. Protein is the key ingredient in beef ribs, helping to provide energy, build muscle, and support cell regeneration. Not only that, braised beef ribs also contains collagen, an important protein that helps firm skin and supports joint flexibility. Collagen is dissolved in the sauce, creating a unique flavor and softness for beef ribs. How do you like this dish? Very attractive, right? Please leave a comment to let us know. It's great if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, click like, share, and subscribe to support the channel so we can be motivated to produce more good and interesting videos. Surely you have known dumplings, a traditional Chinese dish. Coming to this large country with more than 1 billion population, we will discover many dishes that are not only delicious, but whose colors, flavors, and presentation also make everyone admire. Today's video will bring you wonderful moments about the production line of thousands of Jiaozi every day. Let's explore now! According to legend, during the Eastern Han Dynasty, there was a famous physician in traditional Chinese medicine named Trong Kang. 1800 years ago, the god of will returned to his ancestral village after a long time. During that winter, fever broke out into an epidemic. Many poor people and their compatriots who suffered from the cold due to lack of warm clothes and food suffered frostbite, mainly around their ears. Seeing their condition, Trong Kang is determined to do something to help them escape frostbite. He cooked lamb, black pepper, and some medicinal herbs, cut it into small pieces, and wrapped it in dough. Shape them like ears and boil them. All sick people were given two cakes and a bowl of warm soup. After a few days, the frostbite disappeared and the epidemic was brought under control. Since then, most people started imitating its recipe with additional ingredients such as vegetables and other meats to celebrate Lunar New Year.
Jiao Zi is made from wheat flour, then formed into many different shapes. This dish is usually made with minced meat and vegetables wrapped in a crust, then wrapped and prepared by steaming, frying, or making soup. To make Jiao Zi, you need to prepare ingredients for the steps throughout the process. First, you prepare and wash the pork, cabbage, green onions, and onions to remove impurities. Next, puree all the prepared ingredients. After preliminary processing, raw materials are put into carts and transferred to the automatic mixer. Then, mix well with different spices such as salt, soy sauce, to add flavor, creating a filling suitable for each product. The filling is ready! Next is the crust. Put flour, glutinous rice flour, and yeast into a specialized mixer, mix well, then slowly add a sufficient amount of water. Continue mixing until everything is mixed together to create a certain dough mixture. During this process, Jiaozi peels are kneaded more than 5,000 times and vacuum kneaded to maximize flavor as well as give them chewiness. Next, we will ferment the dough for about 45 to 60 minutes until it expands, then move to the process of making the crust. After proofing, the dough is flattened and cut into round dough pieces with a diameter of about 5 centimeters, depending on the manufacturer. This crust is thin but not easy to tear and especially does not stick together when baking or steaming. Immediately after that, the Jiaozi filling is placed on the shell and then used by a machine to press the joints according to the wave shape of the top surface of the Jiaozi. After completion, Jiaozi are steamed at 99 degrees for about 5 minutes and then transferred to quick freezing at 40 degrees and frozen for 30 minutes. Finally, the finished products are packaged, preserved and delivered to consumers. All steps in the process are carried out entirely with modern machinery and equipment from raw material preparation to processing stages. Thus, thousands of Jiaozi were created in a short time. The ways to enjoy this dish are quite diverse. Traditional Jiaozi is enjoyed by steaming. With this method of processing, you not only get the softness of the Jiaozi, but also retain the rich flavor. In addition, when steamed, the meat juice will stay intact in the Jiaozi and is a special treat for the eater when taking the first bite. Jiaozi is also an interesting way to prepare it. Instead of soft and chewy Jiaozi pieces, fried Jiaozi has a crispy crust that melts in your mouth. The more you chew this crust, the sweeter it becomes. In order for the Jiaozi to be fried evenly and crispy and fragrant, it is important that you deep fry it in oil and wait for the oil to boil before adding the Jiaozi. When the Jiaozi's skin is golden and crispy, the Jiaozi is cooked and can be enjoyed.
Not only is it an attractive snack, the Jiaozi dish also brings nutritional values that are very good for health. In Jiaozi, there are ingredients including shrimp, meat, vegetables, combined with spices such as ginger and pepper. These are all ingredients that provide nutrients for the body to maintain health. Studies show that eating Jiaozi regularly will help improve bone and brain health while providing enough energy for the body to function. Soju, representing Korean alcohol, is a pride of this nation. This is a very popular drink. Wine has a long tradition and great cultural significance, so it is widely promoted in the media. Koreans like to drink soju partly because of its low price, diverse flavors, and it's quite sweet and easy to get drunk. So in today's video, Join us to explore this wonderful Korean soju production process. Soju is a clear and colorless alcohol. This drink originated in the ancient Goryeo dynasty and was originally called Arangju. Compared to other types of alcohol, soju is considered to have a low alcohol content ranging from 10 to 25 percent, so it is suitable for all ages and widely used for many different occasions. The soju production process converges traditional recipes and today's innovations to create a special soju flavor that appeals to consumers. The first step in the Korean soju production process begins with fermenting the ingredients. Accordingly, wheat flour will be mixed with water. This compound is also known as nuruk. Once the nuruk has reached the right consistency, it will be put into a container. Inside, the container is lined with a thin cloth and the mixture will be compacted to form a mass and ferment. As the fermentation process progresses, nuruk will dry and harden because it has absorbed all the moisture and transformed into a solid round shape. This phase will take about three weeks. While nuruk is going through the fermentation process, we will perform another important step in the production process, cooking the rice. Large batches of rice are steamed and cooled. This is an important step because rice that is too warm can lose the flavor of the soju, making the wine taste bitter or sour. After the rice has cooled completely, we continue to mix it with the nuruk mixture, then transfer it to specialized wine barrels to ferment for about 12 days. Once the fermentation process is complete, the resulting liquid is filtered to remove any residue from the processing process. At this stage, that liquid is called makgeolli. However, for the Korean soju production process, makgeolli still needs to go through many other stages. After a few days, the liquid separates into two separate parts, collectively known as wonju. In ancient times, each portion had its own significance, with the upper yellow liquid portion, called cheonggu, reserved for the yang ban.
aristocratic upper class and the lower milky liquid portion called takju used by the lower class. Farmers and commoners would dilute takju with water to create their own makgeolli. To create complete soju, only the Cheonggu part is carefully sucked and put into large vacuum distillation equipment. After distillation, the liquid continues to be incubated and stored in a wine barrel, helping the wine's flavors blend and become even more rich. Finally, after a long time, soju wine is carefully bottled and then released to the market. Some soju factories may add sugar, flavoring, or dilute the soju with water, adjusting the product to suit different tastes and preferences of consumers. Soju has a mild flavor leaving a warm and slightly spicy feeling after drinking. Currently, soju manufacturers have mixed and created types of soju with fruit flavors such as blueberry, apple, peach and grape that are loved by young people. Not only widely loved in Korea, soju is becoming increasingly popular in other countries, especially countries in the Asian region such as China and Japan. Although it is an alcoholic beverage, soju has the ability to bring unexpected benefits to the user's health, such as reducing inflammation, swelling and pain, being effective as a cough treatment, enhancing digestive system quality, helping to prevent strokes, and having the ability to improve health in general. Soybean mixture left to rest for three days, then fermented in giant oak barrels. This process has created many famous soy sauces with a strong Japanese flavor. It can be said that this is the most important dipping sauce in Japanese washoku cuisine recognized by UNESCO. Is this soy sauce really delicious? Join me in discovering how to make soy sauce with the 300-year-old recipe of the land of the rising sun right away. Soybeans are the main ingredient to make soy sauce. Protein, the main ingredient of the soybean, is decomposed by enzymes to produce amino acids, which are also the flavor components of soy sauce. The soybean used to make soy sauce is whole soybean from Japan. They will be harvested from farms, then brought to the factory to select the best quality soybean seeds, dry them, then package and preserve them. This is also the place that supplies raw materials for soy sauce processing factories. Besides, wheat is the ingredient that creates the sweetness and aroma of soy sauce. The main component of wheat is starch. This substance is converted into glucose by enzymes, giving it a unique sweet and rich taste, while lactic acid produced by the activity of lactic acid bacteria enhances the flavor of soy sauce. Next is salt. It also plays an important role in fermentation. Soy sauce salt is created from the seto sea to ensure high quality based on traditional Japanese salt production methods.
Do you know how these giant wooden barrels are made? They are called kiyokes. Starting from oak bars, carpenters will create curved wooden panels with high precision so that when erected, they will form a perfect circle. Even when the wood grain color is arranged to be uniform on each side, helping to increase the aesthetics of the compost bin. The outside of the kiyoke box is wrapped with seven bamboo ropes of different sizes. The round bottom of the kiyoke is created by using bamboo nails to connect wooden panels together. Finally, after ensuring the barrel does not leak water from the inside, the Kiyoke wooden barrel is ready to carry out its more than 100-year mission. Today, only 3,000 Kiyoke barrels are used to make soy sauce in Japan, and far fewer barrels are used to ferment the country's staple ingredients. And here's how to apply a 300-year-old recipe to create delicious portions of soy sauce. First, after being imported from the factory, soybeans will be washed. Soak soybeans for about 2 hours, then steam until soft. After the soybeans are steamed, they are crushed using a machine. Next, the wheat is crushed and mixed with soybean and koji yeast is also added immediately after. Koji fermentation is done for three days. We can then see layers of enamel gradually forming on their surface. The mixture continues to be transferred into a large wooden barrel. A factory can contain up to 67 giant wooden crates, almost to the ceiling. Many of the barrels are 300 years old, and each contains a different mix of microorganisms that create its own unique flavors. Then, brine is added to the fermentation tank. The amount of brine may vary depending on the soybean ratio. Salt water is added to the mixture. At this time, the processing factory staff will use large shovels and stir well to make a puree. The koji mold stops growing and the enzymes produced by the koji mold begin to work. And this mixture is called moromi. After about a week after putting the moromi in the tank, the enzymes begin to convert, activating the activity of lactic acid bacteria and yeast and creating the color of the soy sauce. After several months of fermenting in the moromi tanks, it enters the ripening stage. The activity of active microorganisms has almost disappeared. At this point, we will put the moromi in the mold and squeeze it. The drops of soy sauce will begin to drip and we will get pure soy sauce. But, instead of bottling it right away, this soy sauce will be put into older Kiyoke wooden barrels to ferment to enhance its flavor. This process takes about two to three years on average. 
much longer than industrial soy sauce is sold on the market. Thanks to that, traditional soy sauce is delicious and good for health. At the end of the fermentation period, the soy sauce will be extracted and ready for bottling and distribution. Bottling is done with great care to prevent unnecessary bacteria from entering. Finally, add product information and bring it to consumers. Considered the perfect condiment, in addition to making excellent dipping sauce for sashimi and sushi, soy sauce can also be used to add to many dishes, such as stir-fried vegetables, teriyaki chicken, a side dish, or vinaigrette for salad. In addition, when heated, soy sauce will turn red. Eating with Japanese rice cakes will be very delicious, giving this cake an extremely eye-catching color. Because it is fermented from 100% soybean, soy sauce is rich in protein and low in sodium. It has the effect of enhancing the body's resistance and reducing fatigue. In particular, this is an extremely good product for people with cardiovascular diseases. At the same time, it supports the digestive system and helps develop some enzymes that are good for the intestines and body. is the test of Vietnam. Through the skillful hands of Phu Quoc's traditional craftsmen, the protein-rich fresh anchovies from the Pearl Island have become a rich, indispensable condiment in Vietnamese meals. Phu Quoc is the place where fish sauce is produced with a recipe passed down 500 years ago. At first, because fish was caught a lot and could not be consumed, people came up with a method of preserving fish with salt they invented a secret extraction method to get fish sauce. From there, today's wonderful fish sauce was formed. To admire the process of making this unique fish sauce, please watch today's video. The type of fish to produce the most salty, quality, and perfect Phu Quoc fish sauce is red anchovies, gray anchovies, chalk anchovies, or spined anchovies caught in Phu Quoc and the Gulf of Thailand. To have nutritious and fat anchovies, you must catch them in the right season. Anchovies are abundant and most delicious from August to February of the lunar calendar. However, to know exactly where the fish are located, they must rely on their many years of experience in the marine industry. After moving to the previously surveyed area, all ships will turn off their engines and drift. The positioning devices on the boat will notify the number of fish. Just waiting until the fish gathered, the crew members immediately cast their nets. The nets are lowered to a depth of about 25 meters. The nets are connected with small buoys to mark them. So the work of netting goes on continuously for about two to three hours. At this point, just wait for the right time and then pull the net back. Just like that, hundreds of tons of anchovies will be harvested to provide raw materials for fish sauce processing factories. In addition, the salt used to marinate the fish is also carefully selected. 
The best salt is in early autumn. At this time, the sun is not too harsh, but the dryness of the salt grains is still guaranteed. Avoid buying salt in early spring because the sun is weak at this time and contains many unhealthy substances. Salt for marinating fish must be opaque white with evenly spaced grains, slightly clear edges, dry with few impurities. After purchasing salt, it must be stored for at least three months so that it loses all bitterness, acridness, and harmful metals before marinating the fish. Besides high-quality ingredients, an indispensable tool in the process of producing Fuquok fish sauce is the wooden barrel. Wooden barrels for making fish sauce are made from typical types of wood of Fuquok. They are highly durable and can be used for a long time, up to 50 years. The wooden crates are put together with a thickness of 3 to 4 centimeters, width of 10 to 20 centimeters. And finally, the wooden bars are held together with rattan rope. After preparing the necessary tools and ingredients, the next step is to marinate the fish. Fish will be mixed with salt in a 3 to 1 ratio. That means for every 3 tons of anchovies, mix with 1 ton of salt. This is the common fish and salt mixing ratio in Fuquok, considered the best ratio to create Fuquok fish sauce. After preparing the anchovies and wooden barrel, the worker will mix the fish and salt into the wooden barrel. Then cover the fish with a thick layer of salt and compress the fish. The fish will be aged in these barrels for 12 to 15 months. The incubation process ensures standards, clean, safe, and 100% natural. When the fish sauce becomes fragrant and has a dark cockroach brown color, it can be drained. The extracted fish sauce cannot be used immediately, but must be filtered to remove residue, helping the fish sauce to be clear and have a more beautiful color. Usually, they will use many layers of towels or cloth to filter the fish sauce. You don't have to filter it once and you're done, but you have to filter it continuously many times until the fish sauce is as clear as honey to meet the standards. Finally, the finished fish sauce will be checked for quality, then packaged and delivered to consumers. With a meticulous production process, Fuquok people have created a fish sauce with a mild aroma, natural fatty taste, a certain consistency, and stimulates appetite. As soon as you enjoy it, you will feel the rich taste on the tip of your tongue mixed with sweetness. As a traditional and unique spice of Vietnamese people, fish sauce has become an indispensable dipping sauce in every family's meals. And here's how to create a delicious fish sauce that can go with almost any dish. First, you need to prepare some ingredients such as sugar, lemon, garlic, chili, etc. Particularly, the garlic and chili will be minced or pureed. Next is mixing. Use a small amount of sugar to create sweetness, then add a sufficient amount of water and stir well. Boiling water will help the sugar to dissolve faster. After the sugar has dissolved, we will add a little lemon juice, fish sauce, minced garlic and chili. Continue stirring until everything blends into one and you can enjoy it. In times when salt was scarce and expensive, fermented soybeans were the spice of choice. While it's important to get enough salt in your diet, eating too much salt can lead to health conditions like high blood pressure while fermented soybeans contain fewer calories and are lower in sodium. Therefore, soy sauce is increasingly popular and trusted. With a 300-year-old formula, how did Taiwanese people create them? Come explore with me! Completely different from other types of soy sauce, traditional Taiwanese soy sauce is made from black soybeans. Black soybeans are often grown as a crop to improve soil nutrient richness. 
It also has the ability to absorb nitrogen from the air and increases the ability to create natural fertilizers in the soil. Black soybeans usually take about 80 to 120 days to ripen, depending on the variety. We can check the ripeness status by looking at the color of the seed packet. When the seed wrap has changed from green to dark brown, you can harvest. After harvesting, dry black soybeans in the sun or use a dryer to preserve and prevent mold growth. Next is an indispensable ingredient in the soy sauce making process, which is koji mold. This is a type of mold used in the fermentation process. This fungus grows on cooked grains such as rice, wheat, or beans. Koji rice is the most common type made with cooked rice that has been cultured with Aspergillus oryzae. During fermentation, molds secrete special enzymes that help break down carbohydrates and proteins, enhancing probiotic content and providing a unique flavor. In addition, the salt for brewing black soybeans is also high quality. It must be clean, pure salt with few impurities. If you use poor quality salt, it will also affect the quality of the soy sauce. From these very simple ingredients, the people here have created a unique flavor for their homeland. The process of making soy sauce begins with the preparation of black soybeans. Put the black soybeans in the barrel and wash them with water to remove impurities and bad quality seeds. Then steam them until soft. Steaming time is about 30 minutes so that the black soybeans do not get crushed. After steaming, take the black soybeans out and let them cool and prepare for mixing koji mushrooms. Spread koji mushrooms into black soybeans, mix well and incubate this mixture for about 4 days so that the mushrooms penetrate evenly into each black soybean seed. Gradually, the surface of the black soybean seeds will change from white to light yellow to light green to dark green, meaning the bacteria have successfully reproduced and can proceed to the next step. At this time, we will wash the black soybeans and drain them and continue to brew black soybeans with salt.
Mix black soybeans with a sufficient amount of salt, then cover and incubate them in clay jars to ferment in natural conditions. Jars have a round design with a low shape, small mouth and lid. Drying the soy sauce jars in the sun will help kill harmful bacteria, so the quality of the soy sauce will be better and have a more natural taste. This process takes about 180 days. After the soy sauce incubation period, they will take them out and cook them with a sufficient amount of water. To create the final product, they will filter to remove all residue during the processing process and obtain soy sauce with extremely attractive flavor and color. They will be quality checked before being packaged and shipped to consumers. With its rich flavor, soy sauce has become an indispensable spice in almost all dishes. You can use it to marinate ingredients before cooking, or use it as a dipping sauce to enhance the flavor of many different dishes. In addition, because it is made entirely from black soybeans, this traditional spice also brings many health benefits, such as anti-hypertension, high antioxidant capacity, and it helps to stimulate effective digestion. China is famous for its delicious and strangely delicious specialties that makes tourists travel thousands of kilometers all just to come and taste these food. Including the famous stinky tofu of Yunnan province, it is said to be extremely rotten to the point of growing white mold like soft fluffy surrounding it. Although it sounds a bit terrible, this dish not only does not repel tourists, but also becomes a dish loved by thousands of people. So why do we have to let the tofu rotten before enjoying it? Let's explore with me now! Stinky tofu is tofu that has been fermented to create a smell. The taste of rotten tofu is like rotten food. The white cotton layer on the outside of the tofu is called hair because of the few loose white strands, but in fact, it is similar to mold on cheese. The stinky tofu dish has a characteristic rotten smell. The stronger the smell, the more delicious it is. To make this dish, first make tofu. Tofu is made from pureed soybeans with water, then shaped with an available mold, usually square or rectangular. First of all, soybean seeds are soaked in water for about 10 to 12 hours to ensure they bloom evenly. After this period of time, the beans are washed and put into a blender, then water is added according to standard proportions. Next, puree the mixture and pour it into a large container and filter to remove the residue. After filtering the bean mixture, bring it to a boil and let it cool. Once 
When the mixture has cooled, stir well, cover, and ferment for about two days. After incubation, we get the young tofu. Continue to put it into the mold to press and shape the tofu. However, to make stinky tofu, we need to ferment it. After the tofu has been made, cut the tofu into small pieces and arrange them evenly on the tray with appropriate distance, avoiding the tofu pieces from sticking together. Then, transfer the tofu to a closed room to let it ferment. This process will take about 5 to 6 days. After fermenting tofu, it will turn into stinky tofu which can be used to prepare delicious dishes. At processing factories, after being finished, rotten tofu will be added with a little spice such as salt and chili powder, then canned, preserved, and brought to the market. Despite its unattractive appearance and unpleasant taste, stinky tofu can still be processed into many different delicious dishes. Rotten Tofu You can eat stinky tofu without any processing. Eating like this will help you feel the full flavor of the dish. Just add some spices and flavorings such as salt, pepper, chili powder, then mix well and you can enjoy it. Crispy Fried Stinky Tofu Or, you can also enjoy this dish to increase its appeal. Sellers often fry it until it's crispy and sprinkle a little salt and pepper to blend with the unique aroma. The fatty, nutty, and salty and warm flavors create this famous snack that originated hundreds of years ago. In addition, you can also prepare hairy tofu in other ways, such as stir-frying, boiling, or cooking soup, which are also great. The flavor described is a bit scary, but attracts and fascinates diners. Not only that, stinky tofu has very high nutritional value. According to nutrition experts, this dish has very high levels of vitamins B2 and B12 which help prevent dementia in the elderly. In addition, the protein content in stinky tofu is quite high, accounting for about 15-20% to 20 equivalent to many types of meat. However, eating too much of anything is not good. During the fermentation process, rotten tofu will produce amines such as methyl amine, putyrsin, and serotonin. These substances give the dish a very special smell but are not entirely beneficial to health. Today's video ends here. How do you like today's food? Very attractive, right? Please comment a lot below to let us know. If you're passionate about discovery, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to support the channel and look forward to the interesting things behind. And now, goodbye and see you in the next videos!